We continue now at the top of Daf Yud Zayin Amid Aleph and Maseches Erevin. This is Erevin Daf 17a. Rav Nachman just said that if one or two people are setting up mechitzas on Shabbos, then they can do it. Uh, they can set up mechitzas that are either Shasi or Erev up to a Beis Asayim. But if it's a Shayara, if it's a caravan of three or more people, then they can take whatever amount of space they need. So the Gemara says, Reisha Rav Yosi Rav Yehuda V'Sefer Abonan. So the first part of Rav Nachman's statement follows Rav Yosi Rav Yehuda. And again, Rav Yosi Rav Yehuda is saying that you only get up to a Beis Asayim. But then at the end, by a caravan, he suddenly paskins like the Rabbanon called Sarcho. Rashi says, Reisha Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda de Ka'amar Yachid Beis HaSayim. Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda is the one that says that a Yachid gets up to a Beis HaSayim. De'i Rabbanon afilu the Yachid called Sarcho Yavinan. Because according to the Rabbanon, even for an individual, he gets called Sarcho. So the Gemara answers in yes, Mishum de Ka'yavu Abishitase. Because when it comes to the issue of a Yachid, even the father of Rabbi Yosi Rabbi, Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, meaning even Rabbi Yehuda, agrees. Rashi over here says, in Mishum de Ka'yavu Abishitase, Gabe Yachid, when it comes to an individual, Ka'amar Rabbi Yehuda, Nami, that's what Rabbi Yehuda also said, that the individual only gets a Beis HaSayim, the Mechitzas Shasi O Erev. If you make a Mechitza that's only Shasi or only Erev, if it's a Mechitza that is deficient in some manner, you only get up to a Beis HaSayim. So since Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yehuda agree on that point, Rabbi Nachman Paskins like them in that case. Gemara continues, Amar Rav Gidol, Amar Rav. Rav Gidol says in the name of Rav, Shlosha Bechomesh Asurin, Besheva Mutarin. If you have three people, they can have up to a uh, five saw of space. Uh, that's going to be a problem, but seven saw of space could be mutter. Now, what does that mean? So Rashi explains, Shlosha Bechomesh Asurin, Kilomar Pa'omim Gimel Anashim Asurin Afila Bechomesh Sain. What it means is sometimes you can find a scenario where three people are not allowed to even um, enclose an area of five saw. But sometimes you can find a situation where they can, they're can they allowed to go even all the way up to seven saw, even though that's counterintuitive, but it all depends on the particular situation. Uh, so the Gemara says, Amru lay. So they said to Rev Gidel, Amar Rav Hachi, did Rav really make such a statement? Amar Luhu. So he said to them, O Raisa Nevi Yuksivi. It's the Torah, it's in the Nevi'im, and it's in the Ksuvim. Rashi says this is a lashon of swearing. He says, yes, for sure, I swear to Amar Rav Hachi. Rav indeed, Rav indeed did say this. Amar Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi says, My Kasha, what's so difficult about such a statement? What's so difficult about saying that sometimes three people cannot even uh, camp in an area of five saw and make these kind of uh, mechitzos that are deficient? And sometimes they're even allowed up to seven. Deal Mahachi Kamar, maybe here's what the statement means. Let's say they they need, they require a space of six saw, and then they actually use a space of seven saw. That's fine with seven saw, because as we said before, they're not allowed to go two saw over what they need. This is only one saw over what they need, so that's fine. But let's say, for example, they only need five saw, and they go over by two saw, they do seven saw. Then it's going to be a problem, even with five. So that's a very simple explanation of of what this statement could mean. So the Gemara says, But one second. The Mishnah said that they cannot, or the Brisa said that they cannot have two uh, two saw. They cannot have a base asayim that is free. What does that mean? My love, ponim adam. Doesn't that mean that it's free from people? The Gemara says, Lo ponim It means it's free from kalim. Rashi will explain what this means. Rashi says, first of all, that again, if they needed only five saw and they use seven saw, then it's a problem totally. Because the mechitzos are going to be no good. As we said, if they surround an area with these kind of deficient walls more than two saw than they need, so that's going to be a problem. So then the Gemara asked one second when it said they go over what they need. My love, pone me adam. Doesn't it mean it's pone me adam? Rashi explains. Kigon shlosha sheikifu ches soim. An example of that would be let's say you have three people and they use, uh, they surround an area of eight saw. Now, if you would take each individual and give them two saw, because the assumption has been that an individual gets up to two saw, so if you would give each of the three two saw, so that's, that adds up to six. They've done eight. They're two over the individual. If you add up the individual limits, that's what the Gemara thinks originally. Now, that would mean that you get up till eight uh, below below Bailam. You have an extra two. If they did eight, you have an extra two space without any owners. in low. But seven, it seems, would not be a problem. That's what the Gemara initially thinks. So how could you ever say there's a problem of seven saw? If you have three people, they should have up till eight saw because each one's entitled to two, plus you get up till two extra. 
Uh, if you give uh, two saw to each person, you're only going to have, if you go to seven, you're going to have only one extra saw. So that's why the Gemara thinks it should always be okay to have seven, because the assumption is that you measure the extra based on the Adam, based on how many people there are. If each person gets two saw, you should have up till eight saw in a situation of three people. The Gemara says, No, it has nothing to do with individuals. It has to do with Kalim, which Rashi explains to me in Kalomar. What this means is, it just means that among the walls that you've made, there should not be two saw that are free, that they don't need. Even if, if the three of them, it means let's say, for example, three people only need two saw, saw, two, two saw of space. They only need a base saw. Saim. Happens to be they don't need that much space because they don't have that much kalim. And instead, they take four, which is two over. That would also be a problem. And that's how this statement makes sense because it does not go by each individual. We don't give each individual uh, a base sasayim. We give them, when they are three people, we give them what they need and up until a base sasayim more than that. So if they go over, it's going to be a problem. Gemara says, Itmar, it was learned, Shlosha umes echad mehen. Let's say you have three people and one of them dies, meaning on Shabbos one of these people dies, so now it's down to two. Or, Shnayim minitos Let's say you have two people and then on Shabbos somebody comes and now you have a third. So in both cases, let's say in the case of uh, three people and one died, you originally surrounded the area for three people. Now suddenly you have two. Does that make it a problem? Or the other way around, let's say you had two people and you surrounded too large of an area, but then somebody else comes along, so does that make it suddenly mutter? So Rav Huna and Rav Yitzchak, this is a machlokis amoroim between Rav Huna and Rav Yitzchak. Chadam are Shabbos goremes, v'chadam are diurin gormen. One says that it all goes by Shabbos, and one says that it goes by the amount of people. In other words, the one who says it goes by Shabbos says it goes by how everything started on Shabbos. If what you did when Shabbos started was okay, you can continue. If what you did when Shabbos started was a problem, it's going to be a problem. It doesn't matter whether you lose a person or you add a person. The other opinion is diurin gormen. No, it could change on Shabbos. If suddenly another person comes, you can now maybe be mutter to use the air. Area. If you lose a person, then it might now be usher to use the area. The Gemara says, Tistayim, let us conclude, the Rav Huna Hudamar Shabbos go remis, that Rav Huna holds, it is Shabbos that causes the Isser or the Heter. To Amar Rabbah, because Rabbah said, Boy me Rav Huna, u Boy me Rav Yehuda. They asked Rav Huna, they asked Rav Yehuda the following question. Erev derech ha-pesach, let's say you made an erev between a, a doorway that was between two uh, chatzeros, venista or two patim, venista ha-pesach, and then the pesach uh, is destroyed. The Rashi says the case here specifically by chatzeros. Uh, Rashi over here says, erev derech ha-pesach, venista ha-pesach, mayu beis chatzeros, u pesach beinayam, the erev derech ha-pesach, venista ha-pesach. The pesach is closed off, so they made an erev because there was a doorway between them, and then it gets closed off. Oh, mayu beis chanuyos, or another example, let's say two stores, u pesach beinayam, there's a door between them, the erev Again, they're thinking that the Pesach connects them. Something falls and the whole Pesach is closed off. Or another example, Derech HaChalon, Venista HaChalon, they do it through a window and the window gets closed off. So the question was asked, Ma, what's the Allah in such a case? The Omar Li, and he said to me, Shabbos, Hol Vuhutra Hutra. Once it's Mutter at Shabbos, it's Mutter, meaning it seems to be Shabbos go remis. It doesn't matter if later on the door gets closed off or the window gets closed off. So the Gemara says, Tistayim, you can conclude indeed that Rav Huna is the one who says Shabbos go remis. Lema Rav Huna Rav Yitzchak Bepluxo de Rav Yosef Rav Yitzchak. Now the Gemara says, let us say this machlokis Rav Huna and Rav Yitzchak about whether Shabbos go remis or not is also the same machlokis between Tanoim, Rav Yosef, and Rav Yehuda. It's not because we learned in a Mishnah. Let's say you have a chutzer that the walls fall down on two sides. Or the same thing with a house. Two sides, uh, the, the walls collapse. Or you have a situation where a mavoy, the kor is taken. Or the, the, the lechi is taken. It's okay for that Shabbos. Even though in the middle of Shabbos, something fell down, you're still okay. But for future Shabbosos, it's going to be a problem. That's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Rabbi Yossi, um, Rabbi Yossi says in Mutar and Losa Shabbos, Mutar and Losa Lavo. Look, if you're going to say it's Mutar this Shabbos, it should be Mutar forever. The Masur and Losa Lavo, Asur and Losa Shabbos. And if it's a problem in the future, it should be a problem this Shabbos. Rashi says that Rabbi Yossi is really coming to say an Isser. Rashi means to say that since we know future Shabbosos, this is a problem. It's a problem this Shabbos as well. So Lema Rav Huna Damar Rav Yehuda. It seems like Rav Huna goes like Rav Yehuda that we go by how everything was at the start of Shabbos. The Rabbi Yitzchak Damar Rav Yossi and Rabbi Yitzchak goes like Rabbi Yossi, that if something changes on Shabbos, the halachic status can change as well. 
Amar Lach Rav Huna, so Rav Huna can say to you, I know Damri Afil Rav Yosi. I, my position, can follow even Rav Yosi. Ad kan lo kamar Rav Yosi hasam elo de les nula mechitzas. Rav Yosi is strict in the case of something falling down like a wall, because now you literally have no walls. But hacha is nula mechitzas. But here, in my case, Rav Huna is saying, in my case over here, there are mechitzas. The issue is not mechitzas. The issue is there was a change in the number of people that are a resident of this area, so maybe that's different. Rabbi Yitzchak could say, I follow even the position of Rabbi Yehuda. Again, Rabbi Yehuda only said uh, what he says in, in the case where a mechitza gets, a, a Pesach, a doorway, whatever it is, gets closed off, or, an, or a mechitza gets closed off, uh, in, in, or a mechitza falls down, rather. Rabbi Yehuda only said what he said, where a mechitza, where a mechitza falls down, or a lechi falls down, that's only because you have the people who are living there. But here, where you're losing the people that are living there, so so again, it's a different situation. It's not exactly the same, and maybe uh, you cannot compare the two cases. Uh, the Gemara now quotes the mission of the Chachamim Omrim Echod Mishnei Devarim. The Chachamim say that it could be either one. It could be either Shasi or Erev is going to work. Uh, now, uh, as we pointed out when we learned the Mishnah, this seems to be the exact same thing the Tanakama said. The Gemara asks, Hainu Tanakama. Isn't this identical to the Tanakama? Rashi explains. Hainu Tanakama, Rabbonan Kamoi Da'amri Lo Dibru B'Shayora El Behove. What did the Rabbonan say? The Rabbonan said that this halacha of uh, being lenient and putting up walls that are only Shasi or only Erev, it's not only by a caravan, that just happens to be a common case, but it's all the way, it's always mutter. Uli Olam Yachid Nami Mutter. Even a Yachid is allowed to, you don't need a caravan. Even a Yachid would be mutter to use these kinds of deficient mechitzos, and then the Chachamim say the same thing. Echad Mishnei Devarim, you can use Shasi or Erev. So what's the difference between the Chacham and the Tanakam? Again, as we when we mentioned the Mishnah, we said when we learned the Mishnah that it seems to be the same. So the Gemara says there is a difference between the two opinions in the following scenario. Ika Beinayu Yochid Beyishov. The difference between them is if you have an individual but he's not traveling. We were all, in the Mishnah, we're talking about a caravan that's traveling, and then we talk about a Yochid. But that's a Yochid traveling. What about a Yochid who's not traveling, who's in the city? That is actually a machlokas here. Rash she says, "Ika benayu yochad beyishuv." The Tanakama to call Amar lo dibru b'shayor el abahove. The Tanakama who holds that the entire conversation is all the time. But the statement he made was, we're not talking about a caravan, that's just a common case. That's a common case of traveling. So an individual, when they're traveling, when they're on the road, will be lenient by an individual as well. That's what the Tanakhama meant. But we're not going to be lenient uh, in, a, in a settled area. In a settled area, it's easy to make a proper mechitza. Now, the Rabbanan, they're responding to the statement of Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda. What did Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda say? Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda said, this, uh, this mechitza, this deficient mechitza is not good whether you're on the road or, or whether you're in a settled area. And the Rabbanan say to that, no, it doesn't matter. Even in a settled area, it could be Either or, o shasi, o erev, mechitzi, it's always a mechitza, echad yachid, ve'echad rabin, bein b'derech, bein b'yishav. So it comes out that Rabbon and Basra are extremely lenient, and they say it doesn't matter if it's a, a caravan or an individual, and it doesn't matter where this individual is. Even if the individual is in a settled area in the city, he can use this kind of a deficient mechitzos. The Gemara continues at the Mishnah, Arba Devorim uh, Pachu B'machana. There are four things that they said we can be lenient uh, when we're in the machana. Now Rashi says, what's machana? The machana hayotz is We're talking about people going to war. If there's an encampment of soldiers who are going to war, there are four leniencies that they have. First of all, mevian eitzim mikol makom. They can bring wood if they need wood from any place. Rashi says mevian eitzim ve'in choshen legezel. They don't need to worry about stealing the wood. That's not a problem. We're lenient. Upeturin merechitzas yadayim. They're potter from washing their hands. That's going to be discussed in the Gemara. Udumi demai. They don't have to be strict about demai. Again, demai is you have items which you're not sure whether the proper trumas and maestros are taken off. Uh, umila arev, and they're also, and normally, again, normally by demai we're strict and we will take off again, but uh, you don't have, they don't have to be strict in this case. Umila arev, they're also, we're also lenient when it comes to an eruv. Rashi says, umila arev eruve chatseros imikifu elu veelu umechitza mafsekes beinayim. Let's say they surrounded the area and there's a mechitza v'yesham pesach. There's a mechitza between the two the two areas and there's a doorway there. Ain't They don't need to actually make an eruv as long as they surrounded the areas, even if you have 
have two different areas of mechitzas with a door between them, normally those two areas, those two chatzeros, would make some kind of an Erev in order to carry from one to the other. They don't need to make an Erev. They don't need to use a kikor or any, uh, a piece of bread or anything like that. They can just rely on the fact that they have mechitzos and they're connected by a door. That's going to be good enough. Gemara says, Ton Rabbanu, we learned in a b'raisa, Machna hayotzis le melchemes horoshus. Let's say you have a, uh, again, a, a camp of soldiers that are going out to a war that's a voluntary war. Rashi says, interesting line over here, le melchemes horoshus, stam melchemes horoshus, mi melchemes yoshova elach. Stam melchemes horoshus is any war that takes place from after the times of Yoshua, shehi hoysa melchemes mitzvah. That was a melchemes mitzvah. What Yoshua did in conquering Eretz Yisrael was melchemes mitzvah, but Stam, any other wars, are considered Melchemes Roshus. That's what Rashi seems to be saying. So Rashi says, in any case, if you're out to war, Mutarin Begezel Eitzim Yeveshim. They're allowed to steal dry wood. And Rashi says it's even dry wood for sure. They can steal moist wood. That's much less useful. But even if the wood has been dry, they can steal it. Rabbi Yehuda Ben Tema, Omer Rabbi Yehuda Ben Tema says, Af Chonin Bechom they can camp anywhere. Over Makam Shenergu Sham Nikvarin. And wherever people are killed, they are Kona that area. They can be buried right there. That's their, uh, it's as if they own that. That spot. Mutarin uh, begezel eitzim yeveshim. Now again, it said they're allowed to uh, steal dry wood. So the Gemara says, "Hai takanta di Yoshua have it." Why are you saying that this is a leniency uh, much later on in history? This was a takana from the times of Yoshua. The Amar Mar, because the Master said, "Asora tanoim hisne Yoshua." There were ten tanoim. This is in Baba Kama that Yoshua made. Shehu marin bechorshin. One of them is marin bechorshin. Rashi explains what that means. Shehu marin bechorshin. Shehu hey kol adam molech behemosav liros beyar shel chaveiro. A person can take his animals and have them graze in his friend's forest. Velo yakbed bal hayar mishum delav lekzirakoi. As long as you're not in an area where it is set for harvesting, the person who is the owner of the forest is not makved on that, and it's not a problem. Umelakdan uh, eitzim misadosayin, and another thing that they're allowed to do is you're allowed to collect wood from their field. So this seems to be a general thing. So why is it only some special leniency that uh, that was made for going to war? Not necessarily later in history, like I said, but the point is this was a general leniency that Yehoshua made when they when they took Eretz Yisrael. It's not some special thing b'machanah when it comes to war. So, in any case, bo- and, and again, one of the examples is the wood is not a problem. So the Gemara says, no, hasam behizmi behigi. The, what Yehoshua said was, you could take wood like from thorn bushes, thistles, things that are not so usable. Hacha b'shar but when it comes to soldiers who are camped out, they can take uh, any kind of wood. Inami, or another answer, hasam b'mechubarin. Again, with Yehoshua, they can take wood which is attached to the ground. Hacha b'tlushin, but here, we're being lenient even if it's detached from the ground. Inami, or hasam b'lachin, there they can take moist wood, here they can even take dry wood. Rashi here says, uh, even if the Bailam actually detached this wood from the ground, they had it set up that they were going to use it for firewood. That would be a problem of stealing if someone else would take it. For people who are camped out for war, that is going to be mutter in that case. So the point is that Yehoshua, yes, did make some takanas when they inherited Eretz Yisrael, but these takanas go further. Uh, the Gemara continues at the two dots. Rabbi Yehuda ben Tema Omer, Rabbi Yehuda ben Tema says, Avchonin b'chol makom, they can camp anywhere. Uvo makom sheneragim sham nikvarim, wherever they're killed, they can take that as a burial spot. So the Gemara says, Pshita, isn't that obvious? Meis mitzvahu. This should be a situation of meis mitzvah. O meis mitzvah, kona mekoma. The Allah is in general that a meis mitzvah is kona the makom where he is. And again, not a special leniency by soldiers, it's by any meis mitzvah. Rashi says, meis mitzvah, kona mekoma, a kona mekoma, echer miyuta noim shesna yoshuhu. This again was one of the ten tanoim of Yoshua. So the Gemara says, Lo tzricha, no, here it's necessary. Af al gav, even though, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video on Daf Yud Zayin, Amid Beis.